All right, hello boys and girls, this is Mrs. Salter. Um, we are gonna try some pre-recorded lessons. If you have any questions or anything um, during these lessons, um, go ahead and pause and rewatch. But after you've watched the whole thing, if you still have questions or anything, please feel free to shoot me an email. Also, your parents can send me a message if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with me. Um, or maybe we can do a small group if there's a few kids um, that want to chat um, about the lesson. But I figured this might be a little bit easier for everyone to kind of get to the lessons at their own pace. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in, try to do some, a screen share here. All right. So um, you should be seeing a PowerPoint right now. Um, today we are going to get into adaptations. This is part of our structure and function unit. So let's go ahead. We have a learning goal for today. Our learning goal is by the end of this lesson, you can describe physical and behavioral adaptations that improve an organism's chance of survival. So basically, um, what are some things animals or plants have that help them survive? So just a quick review. Um, you guys, I'm sure all remember our bird beaks lab that we did. Um, Birds are definitely a great example of different types of adaptations, um, different types of beaks for different habitats and different types of food. Um, animal teeth, we looked at that. Um, carnivores, we know they're meat eaters. They have those sharp teeth for ripping and tearing meat. Think of that lion and those sharp pointing teeth. Um, herbivores, plant eaters, um, they have those flat teeth for pulling out plants and then grinding them up. Omnivores have, um, omnivores eat both plants and animals, so then they have both types of teeth, just like us. Our teeth, most humans are omnivores. We were made, or I guess originally made to be omnivores. Um, personally, I'm a vegetarian. Um, so I, even though I've got those canine teeth, um, my teeth are still good for um, eating plants and they could be used for ripping up meat and stuff like that. But humans have a combination of pointed and flat teeth, so we're adapted in that way. Um, at home, I would like you guys to um, make sure you're practicing your structure and function cards. This is a great review. Here's a few examples of some that I did. I've been practicing at home myself, but um, just matching them up with what you think each one is. Um, there's definitely, uh, different combinations that could be possible. So let's get into our lesson. Um, today we're talking about adaptations. So adaptations can be physical or behavioral. If it's a physical adaptation, that means it's a physical feature on an organism's body. Or if you're talking about a plant, it's like on the outside of the plant. So physical adaptations could be um, types of teeth. Maybe an animal has thick fur. Maybe they can copy another animal. Maybe they can look just like another animal that's actually poisonous or venomous. Um, so that's mimicry. Um, maybe they have some warning colors that say, stay back, I'm poisonous. Maybe they have webbed feet to help them swim. Maybe they have sharp claws like an eagle swooping down to pick up their prey and then just kind of rip it up. Um, maybe they have large ears. Those are all parts of um, an animal's body, so those would be considered physical adaptations. Behavioral adaptations are things that organisms do to survive. So um, what does an animal do to survive? What does a plant do to survive? So with plants, um, we talked a little bit about how they lean towards the sun. Um, but animals, talking about um, how they survive, an animal might migrate move a great distance from one place to another to find food or to find warmth. They might hibernate for the winter. They might start collecting and storing food for the winter. Think of like a little squirrel or chipmunk. They might play dead like a possum. They might live in groups or herds that make it really hard to find just one of them. They might be nocturnal, which means they come out at night. Um, and behavioral adaptations can be things that they learn um, or they could be something that they're born with. It's part of their instinct. All right, let's keep on going. All right, so there is a video um, about adaptation in plants and animals. 
Um, if you go on the Sunset Mesa YouTube page, um, you can find it. I'm gonna go. All right. So we are gonna go through some examples of adaptations. Um, my favorite, camouflage. Um, so take a look here. This animal is called a sea dragon. What do you observe? Is it kind of hard to see the sea dragon? Yeah, maybe you found him. He's right there in the middle. But he is doing a really, really good job of blending into his surroundings. So why do you think he has an adaptation that makes him look like seaweed? Yeah, he can blend in with the ocean plants, right? He doesn't have sharp teeth like a shark. He doesn't have fast moving fins or anything, but his special skill or his special thing is that he can blend in really well. All right, let's take a look. This fish right here is called a sea dab. Um, and just looking at it right there, he blends in really, really well with the rocks. He's a different kind of fish that can lay flat on the ground. Um, so camouflage, great adaptation for him. Let's take another look. One of my favorite things to look for when I go for a hike, a walking stick. Look at that. He blends in really, really well. Maybe you can find him. It looks like there's two. A little baby one here on top of this one's back. And what do they what do they look like? Yeah, a walking stick looks just like a stick, right? And they move really, really slow. They don't have a lot of defenses, but they sure are good at camouflaging. All right, let's look at this. A horned lizard, sometimes called a horned toad. Desert animal. Um, what do you see? All right, he's got kind of a cool body there. Looks really rough and bumpy, just like the, the rocks and sand where he lives. Also the same color as the rocks and the sand, making it harder for him to see. All right, look closely here. Can you find the animal? Yeah, there's a chameleon hiding right there. Um, and chameleons are experts at camouflaging. Um, they can camouflage into their surroundings, but they do change color um, based on their emotion, how they're feeling, but they can also change color based on temperature, which is kind of cool. And if you can kind of sneak a peek right back here, you can see they are also expert climbers. They've got really interesting feet to hold on to the branches because they, they live up in the trees. Most animals that live in the trees have that cool physical adaptation. All right, another type of camouflage, if you want to think of it like that, um, is animals that live in a group. So thinking of like buffalo, zebras, even birds living in a flock. If there's many animals grouped together, it makes it harder for a predator to, si you know, to signal out just one of them. So with zebras, for example, um, those stripes are very confusing to the predator. They can't tell where one ends and one begins. Even this picture, it's hard to tell how many zebras are there. Um, but another type of camoufl camouflage would be um, like these stripes. So not necessarily blending into their surroundings, but blending into each other. All right, so this little guy, a skunk, you might think of a skunk living in the forest. Maybe he can camouflage a little kind of between the, the light and the darkness in a forest. But he also has another defense, another adaptation that helps him survive. And I bet you all know what that is. They can spray you with a really, really strong odor that's a really big deterrent to a predator coming up on them. They just lift that tail and give them a spray. Maybe your dog has been sprayed or something. It's horrible, horrible when they do that. But that's good for the skunk. He gets to live another day. Another type of adaptation is another physical one. So this is talking about how they look on their body. All the ones that we just talked about were physical adaptations. Um, going back to the zebras living in a herd, that's behavioral. But um, So we have two types of snakes here. Coral snake, maybe you've heard of them. Red touch black, friend of jack. Red touch yellow, kill a fellow. Maybe you've heard that rhyme before. Um, that's talking about these two snakes right here. A coral snake, extremely, extremely venomous. Um, king snake, not venomous at all. Um, but notice they look very similar. Animals have learned to stay away from coral snakes, humans too, hopefully. Um, but the king snake looks similar to, to the coral snake, similar enough where animals are gonna leave the king snake alone um, if they see those markings is you know an eagle or a hawk or someone that's trying to hunt those animals going to sit there and think to themselves 
red touch black friend of Jack. Oh, okay, I can eat that. It's a king snake. Or red touch yellow kill a fellow. No, they're not going to think that. They're just going to see the bright colors and know to stay away. Um, another cool type of mimicry um, is this butterfly right here, an owl butterfly mimics an owl. Like if you can look right here, those spots on those wings kind of look like owl eyes. Birds know to stay away from other birds of prey. So if uh, a bird was trying to eat a butterfly and that this butterfly is sitting there, opens up his wings, it kind of shocks the, the bird that's trying to eat it, thinking, oh no, that looks like an owl right there. And then they, they just kind of move on to some easier prey. Um, here's another example of mimicry, and I apologize, I thought this picture was a little bit more clear, but um, there's the viceroy butterfly and the monarch butterfly. So when birds eat, you know, birds love to go after butterflies, they're pretty easy targets, but um, for the monarch butterfly, it's, you know, very yucky when a bird gets a hold of it. It leaves a bitter taste in their mouth, so the viceroy butterfly um, looks very, very similar to the monarch, both the black and the orange and the spots and stuff. Um, but the viceroy is not bitter or, you know, distasteful to birds, but they do look similar. And of course, a bird is not going to sit there and think, oh, is that a monarch or a viceroy? Which one can I eat? They're going to just see those colors and know, okay, I need to avoid this butterfly. And then the butterfly can live to see another day. Another type of adaptation, and this has to do with behavior, is how an animal behaves, um, is migration. So there's a lot of animals all across the world that migrate, which means they move from one place to another to help with their survival. Um, one of the ones that I'm just most fascinated with is whales. So whales can migrate from a warmer, cli a colder climate to a warmer climate and back. Um, the colder climates in the Antarctic um, they have just really, really rich oceans, good for feeding. Um, the whales migrate up toward the equator. Nice warm oceans, they're perfect for having their babies. So they migrate back and forth throughout the year. Um, birds, of course, are another example of um, migration, which is a behavioral adaptation. Um, they, maybe you've heard going south for the winter, right? Birds um, need to survive throughout those long winters and they definitely migrate from colder places to warmer places to survive and then they head back. All right, so your turn. Let's take a look at this animal here. It's a desert hare. What adaptations do you see in this animal right here? And they can be behavioral or physical. So one of the first things maybe you're probably thinking is, hey, desert hares, they live in the desert and they can camouflage really well. So his color is kind of brown like the bush right there. Okay, what else do you see? Yeah, the desert here, they have really big ears. Those serve different purposes. So the big ears, of course, are, make it easier for them to, to listen for prey. Maybe something slithering or sneaking through the brush, they can hear better with those nice big ears. But also in the desert, those ears act as uh, a way to release heat from their body, which is pretty cool. Anything else that you see? Oh, maybe those strong back legs. I don't know if you've ever seen a bunny hop in, but they can just hightail it out of there, right? They're talking about animals that can run away really quickly. They have strong back legs to help them hop away. Yeah, see if you can think of any other adaptations. Let's take a look at this one. All right, some ducks. What are some adaptations that they have? You might be thinking, okay, I know ducks live in water. They have webbed feet. Yeah, that's a physical adaptation. Part of their body. Look at how they behave. How do these ducks behave? Yeah, they stand like a little group near their mother. Of course, their mama duck is going to be there to protect them, but also staying in a group helps protect any animal. Um, also, you might be noticing the color. Yeah, usually baby animals are um, experts at camouflaging. They're born a, a certain color, a certain way to blend into their surroundings. As they get older, they might change. We've talked about um, a lot of times the, the male animal is a bright color or has bright feathers, big mane, lots of things, and it's all about attracting the female, right? So in this case, you can tell that this is a female bird because she's also good at camouflaging. 
So let's keep going. One more. All right, a lion. What adaptations does a lion have? Maybe you're remembering back to that other slide. They have really sharp teeth. We know lions are carnivores. They're going to be meat eaters. Okay, what else do you see? Yeah, another physical adaptation. They're really good at camouflaging. Good, good eyesight. They have those strong back legs for running, hunting. Good, I bet there's more you can think of. All right, so you have an assignment at home um, and this was on your assignment sheet that you picked up that said week of April 13th. Um, on a separate piece of paper, I'd like you to complete this or you can type it up and email it to me. That's also an option, save a little paper there. Um, I would like you to think of a plant or animal. It can be any plant or any animal. And I want you to identify, like, what are some adaptations that plant or animal has? So think of at least two adaptations that you find interesting. Of course, you can identify more. But when you're describing these adaptations, I want you to tell me, are they physical adaptations or are they behavioral adaptations? And then how do these adaptations help the animals survive? So what special body parts, what special behaviors, what special things does this animal have that help it survive? And just to review, um, animals and plants have adapted to survive in many ways. So it's all about survival. Um, physical adaptations have to do with the body of the organism. These adaptations could be like camouflage, mimicry, thick fur, webbed feet, sharp claws, big ears, strong back legs, and lots and lots more. So it all depends on where that animal lives, right? So thinking about, okay, where does my animal live? What things does it have to help it survive there? And then behavioral adaptations are things that organisms do. So these adaptations could include migration, herding, playing dead. Maybe you've heard of like a possum or something playing dead, hibernating, and lots more. I bet you can think of some more. And behavioral adaptations can be something that an animal learns over time, or it could be instinctive, something they're just born knowing. Like for example, with birds, like no one teaches them to migrate. They're just, it's something that they're born with in their body. It's a desire to do it. It's part of their instinct. But there are many things that animals can learn to do to survive in their habitat. So uh, make sure you are spending some time um, on your assignment, thinking of a plant or animal and writing about their adaptations. And go ahead and send that in to me whenever you are done. And I think we'll do some more pre-recorded lessons. But like I said, if you guys have any more questions or anything at all that I can help with, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm here to help and I miss you guys and I hope you're staying safe. All right, so take care, bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye.